John Woolley here. As you know, I've been in the field for the last several months and now I'm ready to share my findings with the team. This one did not go the way I expected. I thought it best to show you some video before I summarize where I ended up. Now I know that some of you won't be pleased with what you see. It surprised me as well. Robinson, you in particular, are going to have some heartburn after seeing this, but let's just dive in. So basically the internet service providers or ISPs, the companies that provide everyone with internet access, they've got some great exciting new plans for the internet and they've hired me to do some market research and put together a report for them so they can figure out how to best sell their ideas. And so they need someone who can, you know, appeal to the people, they said, and it's this guy. So it's pretty, uh... well anyway, they, uh, they got um, this really cool memo they sent over too. And it's got like all the background on it. Uh, here, take a look. Congratulations. John Woolley. We, the ISPs, have selected you for a very important mission in market research. ISP stands for Internet Service Provider, and that's what we do. Provide Internet Service, or PIS. Customers recognize us as Verizon, AT&T, Time Warner, and Comcast. Over the years, we've spent billions to build the pipes and towers that bring Americans the Internet. Today, we face a crisis. There's just too much traffic. Fortunately, we have a solution. The Internet, as it exists today, must go. Here's our proposition. Instead of everything going at the same speed, the way it does now, we will create a fast lane and a slow lane on the Internet. Giant companies who can pay us more will be in the fast lane, where it will be easier for people to find them. Everyone else can take the slow road. We'll also create innovative new ways to charge internet users for the sites they want. What's stopping us? Well, you've probably heard a lot of hype about net neutrality and keeping the internet open. What do those buzzwords really mean? On an open internet, we're supposed to treat everything equally, whether it is profitable for us or not. This stands in the way of our freedom to make the money we deserve. But the public John. wants the internet to stay open. That's why we need you to get out there and talk to people. And help us figure out how to sell our new vision so we can eliminate net neutrality and reach our maximum profit potential. Good luck. Yeah, I'm pretty excited. What was your job before? What was your last job? I, well, my last job right before this was working um, market research for a hand sanitizer company, which is, um, it's a dirty business. This pretty much goes without saying, but it's not every day that a market researcher gets to work for corporations as powerful as you guys are. This was my chance to have an impact and finally stand for something that matters. The first thing I had to do was get a better understanding of what this net neutrality business was all about. And from the looks of things, you guys were already making some pretty good headway toward your goal of asserting more control over the so-called open internet. I tried reading up on the details, but the articles were all so complicated I couldn't really make sense of it. is the First Amendment issue of our time. The videos I found were a little easier to digest, but still pretty confusing. Net neutrality simply says those companies can't censor content. Wait, but let me stop you, because nobody knows content. what net neutrality is. You already lost a lot of our viewers. The internet is insane. Except for this guy, John Hodgman. Finally, someone who made some sense. Now, these companies have made major investments in getting all this stuff up, and it's all getting gummed up. Not just for them, but for you. You should be very concerned about this. This is the kind of guy that I gotta talk to. This is the kind of guy who gets it. What we don't need is net neutrality. What we need is net new sanity. I'm gonna call headquarters. Hi, this is John Woolley. I'm calling in regards to a John Hodgman. I wanna uh, see if we can find out more about him, perhaps set up a meeting. Meanwhile, it was time for me to start talking to some of these internet people face to face. So do I call you Professor or Mr? You can call me uh, Tim Wu. Tim Wu. 
Okay, so Tim Wu, I'd like to hear it from you since apparently you invented this really confusing term that no one seems to understand. The idea is simply that the net, the internet, should be neutral as between various uses. Right, but just not in professor speak, if you could. Net neutrality is basically the way the internet's been since the beginning. If you want to get uh, Fox News and you want to get your friend's blog, you can get them at exactly the same speed. And what certain internet service providers have talked about now is charging for faster lane. And the only people who could really pay for the faster lane would be corporate interests. You're very much in support of this open internet. Yes. This net neutrality, yeah, this open and free vital internet. So that uh, people who want to go on the internet and find information, like you could have. Sure. For I, example, yes. you could have, before you, you came here, could mm -hmm. have looked up uh, some of the very questions you're asking me. <laughs> Can you explain to me what net neutrality is and how it's going to destroy the internet specifically? Well, net neutrality is actually protecting the internet and protecting um, everyday Americans' voices. We all know that online is filled with garbage and smut and misinformation, and it should all just be completely shoved to the side and have the corporations start over. I, I know, that, is, that sounds like a terrible idea. In an open internet, things do well based on their merit. You can actually take less money than it costs to buy a Ford Focus, invest it in a couple of college students with an idea, and three or four years later, they could have a billion dollar company that hires thousands of people. And that kind of potential, uh, we, <laughs> we can't afford to lose that. I mean, net neutrality is a solution to a problem that doesn't even exist. But these companies are on the record in the Wall Street Journal and various places saying, well, in fact, what we'd like to do is create tiered pricing where you pay a little bit more and your message gets communicated more quickly, and they want to break it up that way. And we're suggesting that that, in fact, isn't in either the company or the consumer's best interest. Let's say you built the Brooklyn Bridge under contract from the government. If that bridge decides, well, let's do a deal with Pizza Hut, so they get to cross the bridge to do deliveries, but not Little Caesars, well, then it can put Little Caesars out of business. You can see that the bridge is a perfect example of what the internet is. It is the critical infrastructure in which everyone depends upon. And if it is picking winners and losers, that's a big problem. What does democracy look like? This is what democracy looks like. It's a battle between the old media that have a lot of lobbyists and the future of technology, the future of media. Are you from one of these uh, corporate interests? Well, I, 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 I'm not allowed to disclose that specifically, but it is. Wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. You have to tell me who you work for. I'm, I'm not going to give you an interview unless okay, you tell okay. me who you work well, for. So you got Time Warner, you got AT&T, you got Verizon. I want to protect their interests, their corporations, which as we know are people. Okay. It makes sense that you're sort of selling their message. But at the end of the day, America at its best works when everyone's voices are heard. You know, hearts and minds can be changed, so it's kind of exciting. It's kind of like Are you going to try to change hearts and minds? A lot of the times, the history makers don't know who they are at that moment, but they are them. All right. You know what? That's a, that's a vote. I got to go vote. Oh, you got to go yeah, vote? And okay. I got, I got just, I got, I got to go. It's starting to get a little dark. Um, and I probably should take a few photos of my cat to put on the internet as well. All my dad ever wanted was to call me a vice president of something. <laughs> well, uh, your career problems are your own, I'm afraid. So after those conversations, I realized we were going to need to get people thinking about what they would be getting with this new structure of the internet, rather than what we'd be taking away. And for that, I needed a visual. I tried calling John Hodgman to see if he had anything I might be able to use. Hello, Mr. Hodgman. This is John Woolley calling. I'd like to actually speak with you regarding the issue of net neutrality. But when he didn't answer, I just had to go for it myself. What is it? Well, I found this online, and it's basically a chart that explains the fast lane, you know? Big companies who can afford to do it will be prominently featured. We'll get um, you know, quicker load times, and you, know, you add five or $10 a month here and there, and then you can get all these exciting sites. So I think that's gonna help people visualize it. It's kind of perfect. The internet is a messy, dirty, confusing place. That's the internet. That's the internet we have right now, right? 
Yuck. Yuck, right? So, if we clean up those dirty lines, they start to straighten out a little bit. They start to look a little bit more uniform, okay? Welcome to the future of the internet. Yeah, that's cable TV, right? Right, there. cable TV. Right, well, we don't want the internet to be cable TV. My brother just started a new blog about education for his consulting business. You'd never find it on this thing. And really, would we miss it? Yes. Oh. Yes, we would. I think I hear what you're saying loud and clear, and here's my response. <laughs> I want to thank you for coming in today, because it really reminds me why I do what I do which is trying to warn people about the folks like you doing what you do. <laughs> Does he even work here? You say you're for internet freedom. I'm the one fighting for internet freedom. Freedom for the corporations. Cleaner, faster internet, who wants to talk about it? You wanna talk about it? We set it up like cable. Are you with me? I decided to talk to anyone and everyone who would listen. Just like cable, you know what you're getting, you got a tiered. Yeah, but you're only getting what the cable companies give you versus where on the internet you have an option to mm. view and see what it is you want. Huh. And I made it out as far as California, where people are supposed to be more open-minded. Folks want to learn how to fix the internet. I know how. Let's say you want international news about what ships are coming into harbor or something. You know, different, different countries around the world. You got five bucks more, wait a minute, well. I hit a low point in San Francisco and a chance encounter while waiting for a trolley just made things worse. You have people that are just clogging up the pipes that are taking but you bandwidth. Know, if they're taking bandwidth, that means that someone is liking that service. I started a company called Zipcar that you rent cars by the hour and by the day instead of owning your own car. People loved the idea, and it was because of an open internet that they could find me. If we had this little wish list here, I would never, my brand new company would never appear on your, your um, menu because you'd never heard of it, you'd never thought of it. And in the next one year, five years, ten years, someone's going to come up with a better idea than you or I have. I don't have any ideas. And John Hodgman, hi, it's John Woolley again. Listen, I'm gonna get, get right to it, okay? I, I left you a lot of messages. Just disregard those up till now. Just imagine this is the first message I'm sending you. John, I need your help. I headed back to New York to see if I could regain some ground by confronting one of the most notorious bandwidth hogs, Avaz, with more than 16 million members. An organization who hogs up that much bandwidth should be able to see the benefit of having an internet fast lane. It can be, if all goes right, the future of the internet. What do you think? If we had this system, Avaz might have never been created. We would have had to, in this world, gone to a corporation and persuaded them to include us in their package of things that they offer. They could have denied us that. Um, so we might never have gotten a chance to get started. And that's the, be the impact on human rights and democracy. You really believe that you're making a difference here with this? I mean, it feels like you're email blasting, you're getting people's information. I mean, we win all the time. And really, because we run at very big targets. So when the cyclone hit Burma, a uh, devastating cyclone killed, we still don't know, between 100,000 and 200,000 people. And the government was a brutal dictatorship that was very suspicious of international aid, so they wouldn't let any in across the border. And we had built very close relationships with the monks inside the country that were the front lines of the aid effort. Everything had been destroyed except for the monasteries. One of the monks filmed a video uh, with us. Hello, Avas members. And made this a video appeal to our membership. We sent it out over email. People came to the page, watched the video, and in one week donated $2 million. And we were able to get this money inside the country to the monks. And that money, I think in terms of our moment of numbers of lives saved, it was our proudest moment. But what else? I think it's starting to look like I'm some imbecile. That night I took some time off from my research and turned to the internet 
what the internet does best. Oh, how cute. Oh, he's winking. I hate this. Someone's using their dog as a hot dog. Cat is playing everybody off. <laughs> so he's just, it's just. Hold on a second. You gotta see it. I'll, I'll, I'll email it to you. Uh oh. Speaking of email. Okay. What is it? Um. Okay, so there's this group called Free Press. Started something called the Internet Freedom Declaration. Okay, that could be a headache. It says we believe in a free and open internet. I'm just gonna call headquarters here. Hi, John Woolley. I just got it, yes. Well, what, what should I do? What should I say? Oh, that's good. The internet is a finite resource, M much like oil is a finite resource. There's only so much. Yeah, I don't think that's right. Uh, I think the internet, it, it's not like a natural resource that we're gonna run out of. We can keep making more. Well then, how do you explain bandwidth hogs? I mean, if I'm trying to watch an episode of Weeds and my neighbor is, you know, download music, mm -hmm. movies, I can't get that episode as fast as I want because of that hog. Well, that's, that's true if your cable provider isn't investing in their service and providing more. Now, the problem I'm concerned about is that today's so-called bandwidth hog is gonna to be tomorrow's average user. Instead of trying to blame everything on the bandwidth hogs, they need to invest in improving their networks. Okay, I'll be honest with you, Craig, I didn't understand any of that. So apparently it wasn't quite true that you guys can't fit everything everyone wants to do on the pipes, since technically you guys could build as much as you want to. But there was one thing Craig hadn't thought of that no one could argue with. It costs a lot of money. <laughs> the, the, the corporations can't spend money they don't have, so let's say they don't have that money. Who's gonna build those, those new cell towers? Are you? Here's the thing. These particular players have lots and lots of money. They are deciding not to invest in the very expensive infrastructure because they're very happy with the profits they're getting now. The problem is that these guys don't face any competition. So Verizon and AT&T get wireless, Comcast and Time Warner get wired, and they never compete. And there's so much money flowing into the campaigns of people who will go up against the internet on behalf of AT&T and Verizon and Comcast and Hollywood and a whole bunch of interests that really want to see the internet squelched. There's no upside for a representative right now in Congress to stand up for an open internet. And we are losing our footing in the worldwide race. Really? Because like, I think we're like, you know, America's pretty much number one. We've got the best speeds, best costs. Uh, actually, you know, we're speed. sinking. We're south of Latvia at this point. We're not, we're not doing that well. What? Estonia's pulling ahead. So, fine. Turns out you guys have plenty of money. But at the end of the day, you work really hard to make that money. And no one should be telling you what to do with it. So I went to Harvard, where people are supposed to be smart about stuff like money. Pretty cool campus. Looks like Harvard a lot. I mean, I know it's Harvard, but it looks like you would imagine Harvard to be. Look, the, these companies, AT&T, uh, Verizon, Comcast, Time Warner, they spend a lot of money building these pipes. I mean, they own them. You know, what's wrong with making deals in order to, to get a better return? That's capitalism. They own them, but they don't own the content and they don't own the innovation. There is a difference between selling goods and building infrastructure. Okay, think of the electricity grid, right? You have a plug on your wall, you plug something in. When you plug it in, it just serves electricity. It doesn't ask, is this a Panasonic television or a Sony television? It just serves electricity. And what we need is bits to be served just the way electricity is. It just needs to be free, open, neutral network. Can you explain what you mean by free? It's like, if you want something, you gotta pay for it. I don't just walk in and get free hamburgers whenever I want, you know? Not free in the sense that I'm not gonna have to pay for it. Of course, I have to pay for access to the internet. What I'm talking about is that because you're on the Comcast network, Comcast shouldn't be in the position of saying, here are the search engines that you get and they're gonna go cheaper or faster because we've got a special deal with the search engine owners. So you shouldn't think about free in the sense of free beer. 
speech. And think of free in the sense of free speech, meaning you, the consumer, or you, the innovator, or you, the creator, get to choose the internet you get access to. How about this? For communities that don't like the way that these internet service providers are presenting the internet to them, why don't they just make their own? Yeah, a lot of communities have. But there are at least 17 states now that have passed laws that effectively forbid these communities from building community broadband services. Like where? Like North Carolina, number one. All right, well, North Carolina, I'm going to have to go down there and fact check you. I looked into what Larry Lessig had to say, and it turns out he's right. There are people down here in North Carolina that had the audacity to build their own internet, and it was actually cheaper for them and faster. Um, but it was unfair. And that's the thing, it was unfair to the ISPs. Fortunately, you guys lobbied successfully to make community broadband illegal in 19 states across the country, North Carolina being one of them. Needless to say, that created a bit of a PR headache. And who better than me to do some damage control? This will make me fit in a little bit more. What kind of shoes you got on? Oh, these are fine. <laughs> Just watch where you stay. Yeah. The fight on our end is constant. There's, there are now nonprofit organizations trying to set up internet uh, on their own to get service out to people who don't have it. Now we look at that as, hey, that's now unfair competition. We, we don't care who provides it. We just need it. We just need the internet. How much more populated does it need to be to get cable? Well, if you have 18 houses per linear yeah, mile. Yeah, right. I know. If I could sell off some land and build some houses, maybe I'd get cable. It's best to probably just not think about it. What would you use it for? Just be screwing around looking at Facebook or? We might actually get on Facebook. We've, n we've never been a... We've, we've never personally been on it, but I think it would be a good thing for our business, just getting our name out there, building, I mean, for lack of a better word, our, our farm brand. The fact of the matter is, if we don't have internet access here, we're talking a lot of southern U.S., right. we're holding these people back from, from bettering their lives. Oh, boy. So I can understand that farming is a business. They need it but virtually no one else was living in these towns. It was up to me to tell them that they didn't need the internet and they probably wouldn't be getting it from us, at least for a while. Just because you're in a rural area does not mean that you don't want to have fast access to right. internet. New developments will have it, and I'm like, well, that's not fair just because we're not a new development. Right. Our kids, they have to, when they come home, they have to do their homework, and they can't because they don't have the internet. I can take you all over the place and show you what the life without broadband in this county is like. Okay, fine. Let's do it. I would love to see it. Terrific. I'd love to see. I'm not, I'm not saying I'm calling your bluff, but I'm saying that you're exaggerating. The Death Hill is a um, high spot on the road uh, where you can actually get uh, 3G connection speeds with AirCard attached to your laptop. This is where my neighbor's children do their homework. And as you can see, all these cars and trucks passing by, it's kind of disconcerting. Um, just give me a second. Um, this is actually a little, a little more dire than I had imagined. Yeah, those are trucks. It's, uh... No, I want to help you guys. I mean, of course, I want to... So, so just so I can be sure I understand, you aren't going to build down here, and you also want to keep them from building their own. Okay. They're going to do all they can. So. I've heard that before. Uh, so thanks for trying. Let me take you back to your car. That was tough, you know? Um, I see where they're coming from. 
I feel like maybe I failed in that I didn't let them see where I was coming from enough or maybe where I'm coming from isn't what I thought. I don't know. I honestly, I don't know where I'm coming from. I don't know where I'm going. I, mean, I literally don't know where I'm going. I should check the map. Our kids, they have to, when they come home, they have to do their homework and they can't because they don't have the internet. If you do this, you pay an extra $5 a month. These guys don't face any competition. The internet is not like a natural resource. We can keep making more. We need the internet to be served just the way electricity is. People loved the idea, and it was because of an open internet that they could find me. People came to the page and donated $2 million. In terms of numbers of lives saved, it was our proudest moment. That kind of potential, uh, we, we can't afford to lose that. The next morning, over my last free hotel breakfast, I was planning my trip home when I finally heard back from the one man who could help me. John. Oh my gosh. Um, uh, can I, do you have a, a moment to speak? Really? Oh, good. Oh my God. Yes. Ow. When? What we don't need is net neutrality. What we need is net new sanity. This is it. John. John. How are you? How are you? So great to see you in oh, person. Okay. My gosh, this Hello. has been a long... Can I come, come in for... Uh, sure. Okay. okay. Everywhere I go, yeah. I'm talking to these people, and they're just not getting it. Even business people that I've mm -hmm. spoken to are like for it, for net neutrality. And it's like... I'm not sure, how do you want my help exactly? What? I want a, an, a new approach maybe. Maybe you can give me some advice on how to get people out there you know, to understand. What side do you think I'm on? <laughs> Net new sanity is what you're on, buddy. Oh. That was magic. It was, it was really inspiring and I haven't been able to do that. Actually, I'm for net neutrality. You see what I'm saying? Net new sanity, that's a joke. It was a, it's a terrible name for anything. You see? <laughs> no, I... That's, that's good. That's I, uh, I was playing a character, right? What? I'm a comedian. Well, a literary humorist. A what? You're making stuff up now? Wait a well, minute. Well, that's you... part of my job, you see? I... Don't do this to me, John. If you are pro-capitalist, you have to be in favor of net neutrality. The internet is not a finite resource. It's a system of communication and free commerce that needs to be protected. At that point, there was only one thing left to do. File my report. So, here's where we are. I don't think people want this fast lane. And it's not just the consumers. Business people don't want it. So I know it'd be pretty profitable, but it's just not an easy sell. Now I know we have some talking points worked out on this stuff, but you guys saw the video. Those only work when people don't know how the internet works. Based on my findings, I'm sorry, but I think you have to look for another path forward here. And I think you should maybe consider revisiting just building more, better, open internet. That seems like the thing that people want. And I know you guys might go ahead with this anyway. So, I took a precaution. I hope this works.